one of the things that gets asked frequently in the forums about Lightburn is why do we keep mentioning the camera? What do you need a camera for? What do you use a camera for? How does Lightburn work with a camera? Um, to give you a demonstration of what you can use the camera for in Lightburn, um, let's imagine that you have a five or six year old child who is obsessed with Star Trek and they like to draw. So uh, your five year old comes to you and hands you a picture that looks like that. And you think to yourself, wouldn't it be fun to do something with this with my laser? So, you open Lightburn. Um, after having the camera calibrated and aligned, which we will talk about in a separate video, um, you go to the camera control window, and with your drawing placed somewhere on the laser bed, you click Update Overlay. Lightburn has taken this snapshot view of the bed of the camera, or sorry, the bed of the machine, and unwarped it, so it's removed all of the fisheye distortion and turned this drawing into a backdrop in Lightburn. And now, with that backdrop in Lightburn, from the camera control window, you can click Trace. If you adjust your thresholds accordingly, uh, I'm going to zoom in here on the drawing. It actually looks like it's pretty much good to go right from the beginning. Click OK. I've captured that background. Now, I've captured a bunch of other crap with it that I don't want. However, that's relatively easy to deal with. Um, I'm going to, with this selected, ungroup, and then select everything, and then use the control key with shift to unselect these things in the middle, hit the delete key, and now I have just the drawing. I'm going to regroup these back together. Um, if I turn the backdrop back on, you can see that this now lines up quite well with my backdrop. Now, I could just cut this out of the paper that I have here already, and that would work. Um, what m might make more sense would be to take this and maybe do an offset around it. Um, something like this and cut out the offset so that you know we have this design sitting on the piece of paper and that would work too but I'm going to try something a little bit more fancy. Um, I'm going to open up my capture window again just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I have a coaster. Um, it's made of slate or something I'm assuming. Uh, I got it at a uh, home store like Target. Um, I'm going to adjust my focus and burn this image onto that slate. Um, so, back to my camera control window, update the overlay. Um, you can see the coaster sitting there next to my design. If I take this and move it over, going to make it just a bit smaller. Make sure that it's roughly centered. Go over to my cut window, choose speeds and powers that are appropriate. Uh, I probably want my line interval a little better than that. Uh, let's do 200 millimeters a second at 25% power. Scan all shapes at once. Hit OK. Have a look at my preview. Preview looks good. I'm going to close the lid and burn this. Something you'll also notice is that it's possible to use the camera control view to monitor the job in the laser. Uh, this is actually the same camera that I have mounted inside. Um, when my lid is open, the camera is looking straight down. When my lid is closed, the camera is looking across the bed. So it's still useful even when the lid is closed.
And so I just updated the overlay. And now you can see if I turn off the fade, uh, the vectors are our design and the, uh, the white in behind it is actually what was just cut onto that coaster. Um, if I set this not to show, you can see the alignment is pretty good. Uh, that's probably within half a millimeter. Um, and to be clear, my uh, laser lid wobbles a little bit when it's up, and I currently have a light mounted to it to get this view a little better, so it's throwing the calibration off just a touch. Um, but this is relatively normal and actually quite good. And there, with my hands touching the lid to compensate for the weight of that uh, lamp, you can see that the alignment gets quite a bit better. But even moving the lid just a little bit affects the overlay alignment a fair amount. So it's important to make sure that your lid stops uh, are fixed, your camera is mounted in a continuously fixed location, or you may need to calibrate again once in a while.